Let me tell you my, where I started from. I started, I had a I had an eight year relationship with the girl. Uh, I had a lot of extreme nice guy tendencies. Uh, at the time I didn't know that because I didn't know what nice guy was. I thought I was just a nice guy who was getting, you know, getting shitted on, <laughs> right? I was thought I was doing everything right. I was being nice, I was being caring, I was being uh, everything that I thought a girl wanted at the time. Uh, but I was also running from tension, not seven into tension, being afraid of it, being afraid of difficult conversations, you know, not creating any tension, that's for sure. Uh, I had a lot of covert contracts, um, doing this, expecting this in return, not getting that. And so when that relationship ended, um, you know, I had a few dates and I had dated a girl on the rebound and I, I still couldn't figure out what was going wrong because nothing was working. And so um, I remember sitting at home one day looking online, all naive, I feel about it right now, but I was like, how do you, how do you get girls, right? <laughs> And uh, you know how you know how the search the search works on the internet. Once you type, once you type that in, you get every fucking advertisement. It's something about dating. And so I ran into the, the fearless videos, and Brian was talking about the nice guy syndrome and all this stuff. And I was like, it was really resonating with what he was talking about. And um, you know, I was like, I want to go. I want to go see this guy. So I showed up to something similar to this, but it was on a Wednesday night. And um, you know, I can see in that workshop that Wednesday night it was just like, okay, I can I can see where I'm at. And I can also see where I want to be at right now. And I can see that the tools that he's talking about will, will help me, right? Because I have no tension skills whatsoever. Like vulnerability, I'm okay with, but tension, I suck at it. Grounding, I suck at it. Um, so I came, I took that workshop, and it literally changed everything. Like it changed so much. Um, I remember the first thing I noticed was that I can stand and look at people in the eye for, without freaking out, without doing this smile that I had. It was a tension release, right? This nervous smile that was like, Whenever I get in front of a person for too long, it was weird. And so I wasn't, <laughs> so I wasn't doing that anymore. And what I, yeah, that's what I would notice is that uh, when I was talking to girls, for instance, the conversations would go, would go a lot longer. I would feel a lot more, and they were a lot more interesting than they were before. You know, and then that over time, you can start seeing the girls are interested versus me being like self-rejecting, pulling myself out the conversation uh, prematurely because in my body it felt weird and I couldn't, I couldn't manage the tension in my body. And so, uh, you know, I stopped doing that and I got a lot of dates, you know, I started going on more dates with girls, started having more sex, I started to, uh, you know, things just got more exciting. And so I kept showing up, you know. Um, Brian and Dave, they offer this free assisting. If you take the experience workshop, you can come and assist anytime you want for free. You know, sit in the back and listen and help out. And so I would do that whenever I could. I would actually call off work, call off work, I would call off sick just to show up and assist for free during the weekend because I was like, I was getting so much fucking value out of it already. And every time I would leave the assisting, I would go back to work that Monday feeling like a whole another powerful dude again, like even more powerful than I felt the week before that. And before that, so I was just like, this, this stuff is amazing. So after that, I jumped into more workshops. You know, it makes sense, right? If something's working, you just milk it until it, <laughs> until it doesn't work anymore. And uh, you know, with the principles here, we always talk about increasing tension and living a bigger life. And so that never really stops, you know? You're just, just like, where do you want to go next? Where do you want to go next? And so I started to feel more confident in myself and, um, you know, started traveling by myself, started to dating got more interested in the girls I was dating got more interested in. Um, traveled with these guys, went to Europe to do a workshop, a week-long workshop. And things were just getting better, you know, got better and better. And um, until one day I, I decided I wanted to quit my job that I was at for, for 10 years because I was like, it, it felt right, you know. And I was scared of the tension of doing it, which means, which means I needed to do it, you know? So I stepped into it and I quit the job. I quit the job while I was in Europe, actually in that workshop, because I think the confidence that I had gained from that, I was just kind of like, yeah, I can do it. It's the time, you know? And that's, a, that's what a lot of this work is about. It's just being more confident in, in yourself, but also learning how to get through the emotional barriers that are stopping you guys from being as confident as you can possibly be, right? And being sure of your decisions that you make and making riskier decisions based off where you want to go in your life. And so, um, you know, I was just taking it very seriously. It was like, it was, it became my life. Every day, every day I was thinking about tension. I was thinking about relaxing to my body, feeling my body, am I feeling my feet? Am I feeling all this, am I feeling all that? And, you know, over time you keep doing that and you just kind of mold yourself into this person who can handle a lot more tension and it, and it starts to actually become completely fun over time. People start noticing you change and people are commenting on how much you've changed, even if you don't feel it yourself. And it's really crazy to see how people respond to you, you know? And I remember where that started from because, uh, you know, they do it. They do an advanced workshop, um, a seven-day workshop in Bucharest. 
And that's absolutely life transforming. And uh, I remember trying to get the first seven days off from that. And my boss was like, you only have this much vacation time, you know? And that was all the vacation time I had. And I was like, cool, I'll take it, you know? And so I took it, went to Bucharest, had some fun. Wanted to go again, and I didn't have any vacation time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, that was tension in itself, walking up to my boss being like, yo, I want to go again. And it was, it was on very short notice. And she was like, look, you only have this much vacation time. You, you probably, you're not going to get paid for this much of it. And I was like, okay, it's cool. Let's, let's fucking go. And, uh, so I, I went out there the second time, and um, everything I had learned from the previous workshop was just taking effect, and I was reaping the benefits of it. And so this workshop was compounded even more, and I was just like, okay, I want to stay out here two more weeks after the workshop ended. And I already knew I didn't have vacation time. So I emailed my boss, and she was like, look, this is going to be, this is going to be considered absent without permission for two weeks. And I was like, ah, oh, shit, I'm going to get fired for sure. <laughs> and so I remember sitting there at the computer, like, trying to change my flight, and all this tension had come up, and it was like, don't do it, don't do it. You need, you need your fucking job, you know? You need your job, you need your job. You need your job. And so, you know, the, pr the, the price to change your ticket was on, the, was on the screen, and it was like $500 something dollars, something ridiculous. And I was like, I can't do that, I can't do that. And uh, one thing led to another, and I had to call, I had to call Delta or whatever the, phone, whatever the airline was, and they were like, um, they're like, you want to change your flight? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, the price is this. And then she started talking to me, and she was like, so what are you out there doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm out here, I'm here for a workshop doing this and this. And she's like, okay, okay. And she's like, well, hang on a second, let me talk to my boss. And so she, she, left, she left like 30 seconds, came back. She's like, all right, we can do, we can do, we can do $140. And I was just like, oh, no, you're making this way, you're making this way more difficult for me. And so I was like, oh, shit. And so I bought the ticket, and that was it. And I was like, oh, shit. And all the tension of like, I might not have a job when I go back home. It just fucking came up. But the other part of it was just like this relief of like, I fucking made a decision. As scary as it is, I made a fucking decision for once. And... Um, it was cool. It was the greatest time I ever had. The last two weeks I spent there, oh, it was the best. <laughs> and then I got back, and I got back to LA, thinking I didn't have a job, and so I didn't, you know, I didn't think to go to work on Monday. <laughs> so, and so they're like, I get, a, I get a text from my boss on Monday. She's like, what? Why are you not? What are you you're supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be at work. And I was just like, so, <laughs> I was going for two weeks without permission. <laughs> So I go, I go to, I have to formally walk down to work and, and quit and resign. Yeah, I walked in there, and I was just like, okay, uh, I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't work anymore. <laughs> I've been there for like ten years, by the way. And so she was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. My fucking legs are shaking, my hands are shaking. So she walks me to the computer. I, I, I resign from the thing, whatever, and I leave the job. And I remember sitting there. Uh, I was working at the library downtown. So you were afraid to the library? You yeah. had you shaking in the boots. It was a city. It was a city job. It had all the benefits, making oh, forty thousand dollars yeah, a year. It was really, it was a really great position. It was security. It was, it was extra security. And so I got out of the job and I sat on this little stump and I was just like, oh shit, my body was just shaking. I didn't know what to do and I'm just like trying to ground out the emotions that I'm having and, you know, there's this little bit of freedom that kicks in. It's like, okay, this kind of feels good. I'm gonna go to the beach and I'm gonna approach some girls. <laughs> 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 so I got, this, I got this freedom, you know, and so, uh, you know, and that was the start of that journey of being like, okay, I, I, I made a decision to do something I always wanted to do, and ever since then, it's constantly been like that. It's like, I travel now, I go to Brazil, I go to Japan, I go... How many territories have you gone through since then? I mean, you probably can't count, but... Yeah, endless. Like, each time, endless. it's like, oh shit, what do I do? And, but you do it anyways. Yeah. And how many have worked out? Yeah, a ton of them. Yeah, a ton of them. It's like the airplane's taking off and shit. If you're scared of flying, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> it's like, I'm on this flight. I, I can't go anywhere now. I've already made the decision, you know? And so that's been, uh, that's been, a, that's been a part of this whole journey of growth and, and learning how to step into, step into a decision and, and see, it, see it through. You know, and there's still some things I'm working out now, but it's like Dave says, uh, it's playing a bigger game now, living a bigger life. So the decision's a little bit harder because there's a lot more tension than it used to be. Whereas before, three years ago, the stuff I'm dealing with now would have just crippled me. You know, so. Do you go to Japan? Um, the first time you went, were you still working at the library, or was that after? Yeah, first time I went, I was still working at the library. Yeah, yeah, and then the second time I went was after I had already quit. Yeah, yeah, so I went to Japan twice. And I love that. I love that culture. I love the car scene over there. I'm so big on Japanese cars. So like going over there was like a dream of mine. And uh, you know, 
Yeah, that's a part of this whole thing. Again, it's just like constantly creating tension and stepping into it and, and living the life that you want, especially with women and dating. And the women are always, you know, it's always getting more interesting and interesting. And <laughs> I want to give you guys detailed stories, but I don't want, I kind of don't want to at the same time. At the same time. It's like getting water and water, but yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. And I, you know, I became a coach. I quit the job. Uh, I struggled for a, a small bit. I remember uh, being in that workshop with you, the experience workshop, and Brian talking about all these amazing guys like uh, uh, Walter, Walter Russell, the guy who kind of, um, he, he's done all these amazing things in his life or guys who risk it all just to struggle for a little bit to, to live the life they want. So all these stories in the back of my head when I'm sitting there thinking about making the decision, I'm like, well, well, you know, this guy's done this. He struggled for a little bit and he made it, right? And so that's always in the back of my head when I'm making these decisions. It's like, it's a little bit of sacrifice in order to have what I want. And so quitting the job was one of those things too. So as a result, you know, having not quit my job, I wouldn't have been able to coach with, with these guys right now. And that's, you know, remarkable because I'm seeing you guys come through the door, take our workshops and your, you guys' lives are expanding and we're hearing about it constantly, constant feedback, constant text messages about people. Oh my God, my life is changing. Oh my God, this, I met this girl, she's into me. I don't understand why she's into me, but it's just like, cause you did the work. <laughs> and that's what happens when you do the work. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really, um, it's really a blessing to me and to you guys to, you know, to be, to see you guys come through the doors and shift the way you guys do. But uh, that's pretty much my story. What was going on when you first came? Because that was right before I came in. Mm -hmm. And you, he said that you like ran out or, or like you like left and didn't like yeah. what was going on like oh, with that. you or your feeling or your. Um, yeah. Whatever. And then you came back. What brought you? Because you stepped into that tension, like that was early on to that. Yeah, yeah. That was my first experience workshop. Like I said, I had no experience with talking to women, and they had me in a bar. And I remember being in that bar because I hate uh, hate to hang, to hang on to the story, but you know, I, I was raised in a more like poverty. Like I was raised in, in the hood, the ghetto, right? So the people that were in this particular bar, they seemed to me they seemed really high class. But they're not really high class, but that was the perception I have of them. They dress nicer. They speak more eloquently, they, they're more hip and all this stuff. And I was just kind of like, I had this, self, this low self-esteem about myself at the time. And it felt like I couldn't talk to anybody there because I was like, I, I'm scared of them. I'm fucking terrified of them. I don't think we can relate in any way. And so after that conversation I was telling you guys I had with these two girls, like it just fucking frustrated me. It just reminded me how, how much I lack the skill to, how much I lack the skill and how much I'm afraid to talk to people. And I got frustrated and I remember being like, fuck, like it's never gonna change, you know? It's not for me, all these guys are in here are confident, I'm not confident. And I got out, I was mad, I fucking left. And I remember driving back home, I was fucking frustrated. I was like, man, fuck this shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I was so, so, so mad about it. But I had paid to be in the workshop, so I came back the next day. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I'm glad I did, because had I not done that, <laughs> you know, I probably wouldn't be where I am now. And going to that place now, it's just like, it's really fucking easy. Yeah, you go in there and start a conversation with pretty much anybody. You know, we do that sometimes. We'll go in there, we'll have our clients go talk to every single person in the bar and make friends with them, you know. And you go there sometimes, you know the people already, they've met you before, you know, so. I hope that answers your question. I just can't believe you're in front of the room talking. Yeah. Right. We, I know. Yeah. yeah. We were both, like, just looking at you guys on the couch, like, because we've, we've been doing this for a while, like, probably four or five years, and so we've seen them come in and become coaches and we're like they have like the hottest sexual and like when we were talking about you guys you're like they just have such good energy confidence. and such yeah. confidence and he would just look at you he could, 180 he'd be like hey thank he you he couldn't look at how are you, you. He could not look what at about us. the weather like I'm, 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 i kept trying to like, do this and get eye contact he would not he just and then he walks off and i'm like what did, what's wrong <laughs> yeah, thanks for the reminder <laughs> <laughs> Like I've had other groups and they're like, yeah, but you know, I'm not like Anthony. Oh, Anthony? Like, oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. John? And you're yeah. fine. You're right where you need to be. Yeah. You can do it. They just did the yeah. work. You do the work. I promise yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. These girls have seen a lot. These girls have seen a lot. But yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs>